Hey guys, it's Ryan here with another oral pathology video, and this time we're going to talk about inflammatory bone lesions. So inflammation of bone and bone marrow is common in the jaws in the form of something called osteomyelitis. And so most lesions are an extension of either periodontal or periapical inflammation. So we're thinking about both endodontics and or periodontics here, while others can be associated with jaw trauma. So inflammation is a natural response of the body to either infection, like we talked about with periodontal and periapical sources, or trauma. So let's talk about acute osteomyelitis. So most, the most common initiating causes are odontogenic infection and trauma. So infection and inflammation usually begins in the medullary space involving the cancellous bone and then spreads later to the cortical bone, periosteum, and soft tissues. So for a radiograph to show that, you know, radiolucency that we've been seeing with all the sorts of lesions we've been talking about, it needs to impact the cortical bone. So if an infection doesn't spread to and involve the cortical bone, we're actually not really going to see anything radiographically. So for something acute like this, I wanted to show a clinical photo, and I found this photo actually of a dog's molar, and it shows this really kind of disgusting separation that can occur around a tooth that is uh, infected with the bone being involved. So the body can really mount a pretty nasty response when the bone is involved with either infection and or trauma. So the symptoms here are deep and intense pain and this high and intermittent fever or intermittent fever. And fever is a systemic sign. So I always remember FML is fever, malaise, and lymphadenopathy. And those are your cardinal systematic, uh, systemic signs. So it's now an infection that's not only in the jaws, but this is something that's affecting the entire body. Paresthesia or anesthesia of the inferior alveolar nerve. And the last symptom is that the tooth is actually not loose. This is caused by periodontitis. And this is something that the exam makers really like to catch you on because you would think that with an infection so intense like this that the tooth would just naturally become loose. But the acute osteomyelitis is not the cause of this. This is caused by periodontal disease that results in a loss of clinical attachment and the subsequent mobility. Treatment for this, of course, we're dealing with infection, so we want to prescribe antibiotics because this is a systemic, um, has systemic involvement, and we want to drain and clear out this infection. Next, we have chronic osteomyelitis, and this one has a diffuse modeled radiolucency because now the infection has been around longer and it's been able to impact the cortical bone. Sequestra is an important word. It's uh, the piece of dead bone and Gars osteomyelitis is this special type of chronic osteomyelitis with proliferative periosteitis. And this is this onion skin appearance. And you can see how basically these layers of new periosteum that have been thrown down as the body's response to this chronic infection. And treatment here would be antibiotics and debridement of the infected area. Next we have focal sclerosing osteomyelitis and much more commonly referred to as condensing osteitis. Now this one, when I took the exam, this one came up a ton, way more than I thought it would. So know this one cold. It's basically the response of bone to some long-standing low-grade chronic infection like chronic pulpitis. And basically, the body forms this wall of diffuse, dense bone. It's a very natural inflammatory response 
basically to wall off the infection. And again, this one comes up a lot. There's actually no treatment for this besides, of course, addressing the cause of the infection. In this case, this tooth would definitely need a root canal at least to clear out, clean out this infection. And if the this bone sclerosis resolves or not, um, it may or may not, but as long as the infection is clear and out and the body can heal, this does not need to be addressed any further. We also have a diffuse form of the sclerosing osteomyelitis. It's just basically the, the last one we talked about, but on a wider scale and could lead to jaw fracture and osteomyelitis. Again, just address the cause, but I wouldn't know anything else about this one. Just condensing osteitis is a really important one to know. Lastly, we have bisphosphonate-related osteonecrosis of the jaws, or more commonly just called bronze because, well, it's a whole lot easier. And the risk of development with this condition is much greater when the patient is using an IV bisphosphonate rather than taking a bisphosphonate orally. So bisphosphonates have that ending adronate, so it could be um, zoledronate, or I, I can't can't remember too many off the top of my head, but anything that ends in dronate is going to be a bisphosphonate. This is, here. here's a pretty uh, nasty picture here, and this was for from a patient who I'm just presuming here was a high-risk patient for osteonecrosis. So you see something like this post-extraction in a patient who maybe was taking had a recent history of taking IV bisphosphonates, obviously has some amount of perio disease and gets all these teeth extracted and you see that the bone, the body doesn't heal over those sockets and instead these bone sockets are exposed and this bone is dead and um, becomes a really um, unfortunate situation. Lots of jaw pain and it takes a really, really long time for this to heal itself. So treatment is this chlorhexidine rinse is really important here and can be tested on for sure. So definitely remember that for rinsing off something of this osteonecrosis, um, antibiotics, and conservative surgery. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful and informative. Thanks for watching. If you did find this video helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more on oral pathology and other things dentistry. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you all in the next video.